Well, in the late 20s, early 30s, part of the race car driver's attire included a white shirt, perhaps a set of white coveralls, some sort of headgear, sometimes cotton, sometimes leather, and a set of goggles to keep the sand out of your eyes. I'm not going to wear that. In a couple of races, a straw hat was an essential part of racing. Matter of fact, in one race at Daytona in the early 30s, they had a straw hat race. The idea behind the race was you had to keep the straw hat tight on your head, and you had to drive around the track. You did three laps on the beach, and if the hat blew off, you were disqualified. You couldn't hold the hat. You couldn't pin the hat to your head. You couldn't even try anything Penske-ish, where you might use a thumbtack or you might use glue. You were automatically disqualified. Well, this car was involved in that race back in the early 30s. Well, the engine's a basic four-cylinder Chevy, but it's got a neat oiling system. The original engines come with the splash system. This one's actually pressurized. It's got a very rare Burns intake, and it's got two Winfield carburetors. The Magneto is actually an early Bosch unit, probably off a tractor. The brakes are external drum in the rear, internal drum in the front, all manually operated from a hand lever outside of the car. While you're driving, you're constantly pressurizing the gas system through a little canister on the outside of the car again. The gearbox is a three-speed, pretty simple gearbox, so you gotta get the RPMs right. Because the engine has external push rods, it's constantly losing oil. So there's an oil tank sitting above it. You've got an internal tap, literally, that you turn on while you're driving to allow the oil to flow back into the engine. On the dash, you have a push-pull lever that actually retards and advances the time. Well, I bet you Burt Deacon Moyers had as much fun back in the day as I just had with this car. He did a ton of races on the beaches. He did some races up in Atlanta. He just had a blast. And after he was finished with the race car, he sold it for 100 bucks. There's still a bill of sale that goes with this car, $100, and the dealer took a 6% commission. Dealer's always got to get his piece, doesn't he? Well, after that, the family regretted the sale. They bought the car back, kept it in storage for the next 50 years. Then finally, Bill Warner discovered this car and had the car restored, and it'll be at Amelia Island this year. What a piece of history. Not a real expensive car, but it's got everything from day one. There's photographs of this car before it was actually even finished. There's photographs of the car getting built. His wife kept all of the brochures and all of the race results from back in the day. She kept all of the entry fees. She kept all of the pamphlets stating the name, the number on this car, and what it was. And he ran against some great cars. He ran against the Frontenacs, the Duesenbergs, the Millers. This car was a Chevy Special for all intents and purposes, home built, but what a piece of history. And like I said earlier this year, not every car has to be a million dollar car for you to have fun in. This car isn't worth a ton of money, but it's as much fun as any of those million dollar race cars. <laughs>